Bo is Afraid is the latest film from A24 darling horror mastermind Ari Aster. I just got finished watching it and I have some very strong opinions on it. Some of them may be very blunt, so if you disagree with any of them, I strongly encourage you to reciprocate that energy in the comment section. Also, there will be some mild spoilers at some point in this review. I'll be sure to give you a warning right beforehand. The synopsis of Bo is Afraid reads, Following the sudden death of his mother, a mild-mannered but anxiety-riddled man confronts his darkest fears as he embarks on an epic Kafkaesque odyssey back home. I watched the first trailer the day it was released and afterwards made a conscious decision to block out any news, future trailers, and plot hints. Hereditary is one of my favorite movies of the last decade and probably one of my favorite movies generally, and I like Midsommar as well despite it not living up to its predecessor, in my opinion. I went into Bo completely blind, succumbing to whatever wonderfully horrific madness Aster crafted this time around. To say Bo is afraid is a drastic departure from Aster's first two films is a hefty understatement. Instead of a culty, gory, psychologically probing horror movie, we got a morbidly dark, absurdist comedy. Something like a Charlie Kaufman film on acid. Three hours after entering the theater, I left, emotionally exhausted and mentally drained. Suffice it to say, I had some serious issues with Bo is Afraid. But before I get into them, I want to begin by addressing some of the film's pros. The first, and probably most obvious, is Joaquin Phoenix's performance. The role was quite a departure for the Oscar-winning actor as well. The description of the character in the synopsis as mild-mannered and anxiety-riddled is pretty generous. From the jump, it's clear that the world Bo inhabits does not resemble reality in any fashion. The world makes less and less sense the further into the movie we go. Since we're seeing this wacky world through Bo's perspective, it's possible that Aster is attempting to simulate a mental illness such as schizophrenia through the eyes of the sufferer. The alternative is that this abnormal reality is simply the zany logic of the film, in which case Bo is extremely stunted emotionally and socially. Either way, this impediment and the fact that the character is mostly passive having to negotiate the obstacles and pickles thrown at him and relying upon the actions of others to drive the plot forward makes this job for Phoenix a difficult one. There isn't much depth to Bo, but Phoenix fleshes him out with a remarkable degree of pathos that can keep you invested in the film through its choppier waters. Another pro is the humor. Aster flexes his range by showing that he can not only disturb you, but make you laugh as well. In some parts of the film, he does both simultaneously. The humor is extremely dark. Being absolutely mortified while also chuckling is not something a lot of filmmakers can make you do. While funny all throughout, I felt the humor really clicked in the first act of the film, where it juggled darkness, chaos, and surrealness to an anxiety-inducing degree. I describe that opening act a bit like Uncut Gems meets Eric Andre. Another pro is the cinematography and overall aesthetic. Every frame of the film looks amazing and is vividly brought to life. The animated sequences in particular were a novel standout and freshened up the film quite a bit as it was beginning to get stale. Unfortunately, however, that whiff of novelty would not be nearly enough to save the film from its final act what was to me the disastrous part of Bo's Odyssey. And it is here where I will venture into some mild spoiler territory, so if you haven't yet seen Bo is Afraid, go see it, or don't. The basic plot of the film, Bo's metaphorical Odyssey, concerns Bo going back home to visit his mother, with whom he has a tempestuous relationship. He eventually reaches his destination. Beforehand, all of Bo's loony misadventures and detours were difficult to follow logically for reasons stated before, but the pure surreality and the humor of the situations were enough for me to stick with it. Aster was taking the audience on a weird, wacky ride, and I was a willing passenger. When the true nature of Bo's relationship with his mother took center stage, it's when I found myself unconsciously reaching for my phone for respite. No longer was I amused or invested. 
the film became uncomfortably personal at a point at which the bloated runtime was already wearing my attention razor thin. To me, these scenes, the final act, felt like Aster sloppily spewing his own anxieties and neuroses onto the screen, ultimately at the expense of the audience's enjoyment and attention. You could argue that this was the final catharsis the film was logically hurtling toward all along, but it'd be the first instance of logic in the whole film. It may have been more digestible if the film was cut by 40 minutes or so, but regardless, I couldn't shake the sense that Aster ultimately sacrificed what could have been a good movie to narcissistically trauma dump onto a paying audience, bludgeoning them with the sum of his own therapy sessions. I can to an extent understand an opposing argument centered around the necessity of artists incorporating personal elements into their art and the importance of vulnerability to create relatability. Personally, I'd rather get treated to a good story without the strings attached. Also, I didn't find the final act to be artistically vulnerable as much as I did painfully insecure, enough to give me some second-hand embarrassment. As much as the final act of Bo is Afraid irked me, I still have to tip my cap to Aster. In my mind, he successfully proved that he has serious range. Humor is another weapon in his arsenal. He's not just the horror guy. This, however, does make the deflating ending more disappointing, which is why I don't think studios should let him run rampant with his wild visions anymore. If he was reined in a little bit, Bo is Afraid could have been a good film, instead of the wacky mess it became. I believe Aster's indulgence, in the end, harmed the final product significantly.